we just have one final exciting announcement for you. And I don't want to give the game away entirely, but just pay close attention to the title of our next speaker. Please put your hands together for the Ambassador of the Republic of Ireland in New Zealand, Peter Ryan. Thank you for the opportunity to be here, and uh, that was quite emotional there, Stephen. But uh, you could see the, you could see certainly the the teamwork and the leadership uh, shining through. I want to thank Stephen for the opportunity to be here today, and Paul and Sarah, and to congratulate them on what was obviously a very successful couple of days. We're only a small little place. We're 18,000 kilometres located away from New Zealand but we share so many similar similarities that it's quite extraordinary. Whether that's a, a similar history, whether that's a similar outlook on the world, whether that's some similar demographics, whether that's some similarity on the sporting fields from time to time, or whether that's similarities in terms of our infrastructure, in terms of our economic development. Whatever those areas are, whatever area you think of, uh, Ireland and New Zealand share actually quite remarkable similarities when you think of that geographical difference between us. We're very excited and we're very much, uh, very much honoured actually and privileged to have the opportunity to work with Infrastructure New Zealand and to begin that process that's really starting, it really started a couple of weeks back. And we couldn't think of a more exciting time actually to come and a more interesting time to come to take a look at what's happening in Ireland. First of all, we have something happening with our next door neighbour and nobody has mentioned the word B here since I got here, so thank you for that. Uh, but we do have a very interesting development taking place obviously in, in, in the European Union at the moment. I think at the wider backdrop when Stephen uh, and myself sat down with Paul and Sarah as well about this and Stephen said, look, one of the things that will be really interesting is to hear about the Irish story since the global financial crisis. I'll just summarise it for you in a, couple of, in, in, in a couple of sentences if I can. First of all, Ireland is now at full employment. So our unemployment rate is lower than 5%, which is full employment in an Irish sense. Second of all, last year our, was our greatest year in terms of our export earnings for overseas. Thirdly, our national development plan has been reconfigured as an Ireland 2040 Our Plan initiative. And the idea of that is that for the very first time in Ireland, we're pulling together all our national, regional and local planning uh, programs in order to put in place an infrastructure and make sure that we are set for our development to 2040. Why do we need to do that? because by 2040, within the next 20 years, our population will increase by one million people. We're now at full employment, but by 2040, we're gonna to have to create an additional 600,000 jobs. By 2040, we're gonna to have to build an additional half a million new homes. And many of you will remember that during the, and after the global financial crisis, house building in Ireland essentially stopped and the domestic banking sector was really badly affected by mortgage lending and overdevelopment, and very, very, I suppose, some slapdash planning, frankly. And we'll put our hands up for that, and we've learned our lesson from that. So our infrastructure development is actually fundamental to everything that the government is doing right now. So we're looking also, obviously, at the sustainability agenda we're looking also at major infrastructural and transport programs that we haven't had before. For example, we're looking at light rail systems in our regional centres, which is not something we'd considered in the past. Our major airport now, Dublin Airport, in 2018, flew the highest number of people that it flew since it opened. It flew roughly five times the population of Ireland. 31 million people flew through Dublin Airport. So it's a very interesting time, I think, to be going to taking a look. And I think also with the European influence and the European impact in Ireland, 
I think this is also interesting time. I think also one of the other things that's, that, we're, that we're seeing much more of is a, a real openness in Ireland to learning best practice from overseas. So if I could ask, certainly we will see this as a two-way process. We want to hear uh, about the work of the new commission here. We want to hear about the work of Infrastructure New Zealand. And we want to share with you also, not just the experience in Ireland, but also the wider European experience. And many of you will be aware that Ireland is probably one of the locations of choice for US companies in, in the European Union. We get roughly about six times more investment from the US than we should get proportionately. So when you, when you mentioned there, Natasha is heading off on her OE and marketing experience, I was just thinking immediately to myself, if I was a young marketing and communications person, I'd be going to where Facebook, Google, Twitter, and LinkedIn have their European headquarters. I'd be going to Dublin. So we think there's lots of opportunities for learning from both sides. I think one of the nice little things about Ireland, which I think we, we share with New Zealand, is that we're pretty approachable people. We don't need a big fuss. We don't do hierarchy. And we, we're very accessible. You don't need to spend a huge amount of time in Ireland to figure the place out. We're going to put together for Infrastructure New Zealand the best of public and private sector uh, people that we can assemble in a room. So whether that's to learn from the public uh, officials about public policy, whether that's to learn from private sector, the people who really make it happen, or whether that's to learn from industry in terms of networking and talking about opportunities, perhaps in third markets together with firms, and also uh, to share some of the experience of Irish firms who are working globally. So we're going to forget about the tyranny of distance for a little while, and we're going to talk about where we get an opportunity to collaborate with one another and to really use this visit as the milestone event that it is. Last August, almost one year ago, I think one year ago tomorrow, I presented credentials here as the first ambassador of Ireland to New Zealand. Pretty special moment, I should say. Not so much for me, but I suppose for in, 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 in our history and for the Irish community who have done so much uh, and contributed so much to New Zealand and benefited so much and been part of the New Zealand story. And in November of last year, New Zealand opened their first embassy in Dublin. So you've got a really good guy there, a really good team there. Brad Burgess is the ambassador. So you've got, a, you've got I think, people who are very active and proactive on both sides. So I think that's going to be a great sense in relation to timing. And when I met Sarah, Paul, and Stephen, I was saying to them that when I arrived here, I had one simple aim as the first ambassador of Ireland to New Zealand. And that was to make sure that I wasn't the last ambassador of Ireland to New Zealand. And I was up in the Waikato a couple of weeks ago, and uh, your finance minister, Grant Robertson, reminded me that depending on how the World Cup early rounds go, we could find ourselves in a situation where New Zealand, the All Blacks, come up against Little Ireland, the guys in green from the other side of the world. And the, the finance minister reminded me, he said, Peter, remember where you have to live for the next two to three years after the World Cup. So I don't, I don't, I've no idea how that's going to go. We're certainly going to give it a try. Uh, we've never got past the quarterfinals in the World Cup, so we're going to be building you guys up as the hot favourites, and uh, we'll come as the underdog because we like to be the underdog. But the one thing that I can promise you is whatever happens in the World Cup, and whether you bring the trophy with you to Ireland next year or whether we have the trophy there for you to look at, we can promise you the warmest of welcomes. We don't say welcome in Ireland, as Tara Daly would have told you. Uh, we say Cade Mila Falcher, which means 100,000 welcomes. We can promise you the warmest of welcomes, the most, um, I think, focused program that you can hope to get. We're not going to waste your time. We're going to get you in front of the right people, public sector, private sector, and we're going to facilitate a real dialogue for you that hopefully is the beginning of even closer 
connections and commercial connections and policy connections between Ireland and New Zealand. And I look forward to helping you and working with you as part of that. And I believe there's a bit of a party going on now in a few minutes and the second clock is counting down. I want to thank you. I hope to get a chance to meet some of you guys uh, over the next while. And I'm around and Sarah and, and the guys have my details. So if I can be of any help, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Thank you very much.